It's story time. Please read to me. Read me a story, please. The Education Channel happily brings you story time. A favorite story read to you right here on TV. Story time is a daily read aloud show designed just for you. Story time is made possible by Collier County Public Schools, Barnes and Noble Booksellers, and Naples Daily News. On this show, our featured story is I Am the Dog, I Am the Cat, written by Donald Hall, and pictures by Barry Moser. Our guest reader, Angela Lorzell, 2010 Golden Apple Teacher. So are you ready, boys and girls? We're ready! Then it's story time, and here's our story. Hello. It's nice to have you here to listen to a story. Would you mind introducing yourselves and tell me what school you are at? Hadley, and I'm in Pelican Marsh. Okay. Matthew in Pelican Marsh, too. Ashley and I am at Pelican Marsh also. Fabulous. Well, this, today we're going to be reading a story. It's called I Am the Dog, I Am the Cat. It's by Donald Hall and illustrations by Barry Moser. And you can tell why I probably like this, can't you, already? Just the illustrations are wonderful. Okay. Here's the dog. Dog. I am the dog. I like bones. I like to bury bones. As for eating, I can take it or leave it. But I like it when they feed me. Cat. I am the cat. I don't care whether they feed me or not as long as I get fed. Sometimes I tease them to feed me, then turn up my nose at what I get. Have you ever seen a cat do that? Dog. Making the acquaintance of babies, I allow them to pull my hair. I do not like it, but I allow it for I am the dog. Cat. When babies come into the house, I try to vanish. Babies are crazy. Babies sit on you. Dog. I am brave as I bark to frighten the burglar disguised as a UPS man, or the kidna kidnapper who pretends to be a bicyclist wanting a drink of water. Cat, strangers are just fine. If I feel like a lap, I feel like a lap. Why should I care what they feel like? You ever sit, come, went to someone's house and just sat down and a cat came and sat on you? Isn't that funny how they do that? If they feel like sitting on a lap, they sit on a lap. Dog. I sleep all day in order to stay rested, in order to be alert when it is my duty to bark. Cat. I sleep all day in order to stay awake all night on mouse patrol. Notice what's happening over there. There's a little mouse crawling by. The dog doesn't pay attention. Dog, after I sleep all day, I sleep all night, for I am the dog. <laughs> Cat, cats work hard. When people and dogs are asleep, I never stop hunting mice. In the absence of mice, I hunt pieces of paper, paper clips, and rubber bands. Dog. When I walk in the country, I chase rabbits, them, butterflies, trucks, and sticks, for I am the dog. Cat. When I want to go through a door, I pie at it 
and meow when they finally open the door. I don't want to go through it anymore. You ever seen a cat act like that? They want something, they want something, and they, no. Dog, when I smell something wonderful, I roll in it. Cat, every now and then I decide to act frightened. From a deep sleep, I leap suddenly into the air, then run off and hide somewhere. Great idea. Dog, I am nervous when I hear thunder. You hear thunder yesterday? It was so frightening. Firecrackers or guns, and nothing they say will comfort me. Cat, nothing frightens me. It's not that I'm brave. It's just that nothing frightens me. Dog, when I walk in town, I sniff at fire plugs, telephone poles, fences, hedges, and other dogs. For I am the nose. You ever tried to take your dog for a walk? Does he want to sniff everything, everywhere? <laughs> Cat. All day long when I'm awake, I watch birds from the top of the bread box in the pantry window. If I listed all the birds I've ever seen, the list would go on for a thousand pages. Dog. I scratch fleas, suddenly and ferociously. Cat, don't touch me, for I am the cat. Dog, when I swim in the pond, I bark at minnows. Then I shake water on you, for I am the dog. Does anybody know what a dog looks like when he shakes water? Let me see it all over the place, right? And always right next to you. It seems like they always come right next to humans that don't want to get wet. Cat, I keep myself clean. What if the president dropped by? Dog, I like chasing a ball. It amuses me when they beg to get it. Who's the they they're talking about? The humans. Cat, the VCR is warm. It is my bed in a house. For I am the yawning cat. Dog, I like my ears scratched. I like praise. I cannot bear it when they use that tone of voice. I am ashamed, for I am the dog. What's something naughty a dog might do? Gets in trouble. Can you think of something? Chew up your shoe. Chew up your shoe. And then someone would use that tone of voice, wouldn't they? Naughty dog. Cat, the dog amuses me. He cares about what people think. I wash his muzzle. Dog, I pretend nip the cat when she not washes me. Cat, dogs are nervous and well-meaning. It is well known that cats are at the same time independent, selfish, fearless, beautiful, cuddly, scratchy, and intelligent. Good adjectives. Dog. Cats just don't care. Only a dog is at the same time dignified, guilty, sprightly, obedient, friendly, vigilant, and soulful. Cat. I leap for his throat. I hurl myself at his muzzle, which is the same size as I am. After a while, he bows. Cat, dog. Cats are weird. Cat. I walk away 
with my tail in the air, for I am a cat. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Stay with the Education Channel, home of story time. On TV weekdays at 7 a.m., noon, and 7 p.m. And watch a Storytime Marathon beginning at 8 o'clock every Saturday morning. Our next story is Chewy Louie, written and illustrated by Howie Snyder. Once again, our guest reader, Angela Larzell. And this book is called Chewy Louie. I love this book because it reminds me of my own dog when I was a little girl. One day, my father brought home a little black puppy. He was very cute and always hungry. We called him Chewy Louie. Look at the kitchen. What a wreck. He ate everything we put in his bowl. Look at his, Look at his tail wagging. Isn't that funny? Then he ate his bowl. My mother was very worried. He'll get sick, she said. Look at him. He's a little chewy. Little. <laughs> he looks like he might be a little nauseous. He won't get sick, my father said. He's just a puppy. Then he bought Louie a new bowl. That one didn't make him sick either. There he goes again. Louie slept with me in my bed at night. I don't know if he's doing much sleeping. Look at him. When he wasn't eating my toys, Louie ate my trains before they reached the station. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Then he ate the station. My mother was very worried. My father said he would buy a new set of trains. He's just a puppy, he said. Look at him go. He's like running for something new. It's cute. One day, Louie started to eat the back porch. My mother was horrified. My father was a little concerned, too. That's some puppy, he said. We decided to take Louie to a vet. The vet said to feed him more. Seems like good advice. He's just a growing puppy, he said. Look at that. He's chewing the back seat of the car while he's in there. He's just a growing puppy, he said. Then he gave us the bill. That night, my father and mother sat down to figure out what to do. I was afraid they were going to give Louie away. My father hired a construction crew to repair the house. My birthday party was coming up soon, and my mother wanted the place to look nice. What a cute puppy, said one of the workmen. They went inside to talk to my father about the job. Then they came back out and saw their truck. Right there. Then they quit the job. My father was furious. I thought he was really going to send Louie away this time. He decided to hire a trainer. Look what Louie's doing. What's he doing, Matthew? Yeah. <laughs> he can't even control himself for a minute, can he? The trainer arrived the next day and immediately went to work. And so did Louie. 
says, no, 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 bad, bad dog, bad dog, bad dog. No, 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 bad dog, bad. Trainer doesn't seem to be too happy, does he? <laughs> then my father had to hire another trainer. She brought a guitar along and sang songs to Louie about the error of his ways. I love you, what you don't chew, you better, you're, you bet your pretty teeth, I do. <laughs> I hope she's a better singer. Then she sings, it's not nice to eat the table, even if you're able, wood's not good for you. But I think Louie liked her songs very much, but he really loved her guitar. <laughs> we didn't have any more time to worry about Louie now. My birthday party was tomorrow, and we all had to work hard to fix the place up. My mother wanted the party to be a big success. But instead, all of her worst fears came true. Louie was horrible. Mm -hmm. What's he doing, Hadley? Eating the table. Eating the table with the birthday celebration on it. I woke up the next morning feeling miserable. I knew now that we couldn't keep Louie. I decided to play one last game of fetch with him. Although it really wasn't fetch. I just threw the sticks and Louie ate, <laughs> ate them. But not today. Louie brought the stick back today. Hey, Dad, I shouted. Look at Louie. He's not chewing anymore. Even my mother was impressed. Look at him, he says. So Louie was changing. He was getting older and bigger every day. He didn't even eat my toys anymore. My mother still worried. Do you think he, st he stopped chewing for good? She asked. Of course, said my father. Where's Louie? <laughs> He's not a puppy anymore. And then I love this. What does it look like? Big bite. Big bite. You're watching the Education Channel, home of story time. Favorite stories read to you three times each day right here on TV. Our next story is Dogzilla, written and directed by Dave Pilkey. Once again, our guest reader, Angela Lorzell. This is Dogzilla. It's written and directed by Dave Pilkey. And do you recognize the name Dave Pilkey from other books that you've read before? Has anybody read Captain Underpants books before? <laughs> Those silly books. They're funny. They're a funny series. So, this is a book, and the interesting thing about it is that they gave this book a rating. It's E.G. Have you heard of PG and G rating? Well, this is EG. It says, this book has been rated extremely goofy. Some material may be too goofy for grown-ups. And it is starring some of his own animals, his own pets. Flash as the big cheese. Rabies as Professor Scarlett O'Hare. A special appearance by Dwayne as the soldier guy, and Leah as the monster. I love that. It says, the stars of Dogzilla are the author's pets. No harm came to any of the animals during the making of this book. It's the first annual barbecue cook-off. It was summertime in the city of Mousopolis, and mice from all corners of the community had come together to compete for the first annual barbecue cook-off. As the cook-off got underway, smoke from the hot grills lifted the irresistible scent of barbecue sauce over the rooftops of the city. A gentle wind carried the mouth-watering smell into the distance, right over the top of an ancient crater. Before long, 
a strange and mysterious sound was heard. Sniff, 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 sniff. All at once, the volcano began to tremble. And suddenly, up from the very depths of the earth came the most terrifying creature ever known to mouse kind, the dreadful dogzilla. <laughs> Immediately, soldiers were sent out to stop the mighty beast. The heroic troops were led by their brave commanding officer, the Big Cheese. All right, you old flea bag, squeaked the Big Cheese. Get those paws in the air. You're coming with us. Ready? Without warning, the monstrous mutt breathes her horrible breath onto the mice. Doggy breath, screamed the soldiers. Run for your lives. <laughs> hey, come back here, shouted the big cheese to his troops. What are you? Men or mice? We're mice, they squeaked. Hmm, said the big cheese. You're right. Wait for me. <laughs> the colossal canine followed the soldiers back to Mousopolis, licking up all the food in her path. Afterward, Dogzilla wandered through the city streets, doing those things that come naturally to dogs. Sniffing, eating, sniffing. Dogzilla chased cars right off the freeway. The dog with the mice in it? Dogzilla chewed furniture and the furniture store as well. <laughs> and Dogzilla dug up bones. at the Museum of Natural History. Does this remind you of anything? What? Instead of a giant T-Rex, it's a giant mouse. Fossils, right? Meanwhile, the Big Cheese had organized an emergency meeting with one of the city's greatest scientific minds, Professor Scarlett O. Harry, gentle mice said Professor O'Harry. This monster comes from prehistoric times. It is perhaps a million years old. Maybe we could teach it to do something positive for the community, suggested the Big Cheese. I'm afraid not, said Professor O'Harry. You simply can't teach an old dog new tricks. You heard that phrase before? Can't teach an old dog new tricks. If we're going to defeat this dog, we've got to think like a dog. We've got to find something that all dogs are afraid of. Something that will scare this beast away from Mousopolis forever. I've got an idea, squeaked the big cheese. Within minutes, the mice had assembled at the center of town. All right, Dogzilla shouted the big cheese. No more Mr. Mice Guy. It's bath time. Suddenly, a blast of warm, sudsy water hit Dogzilla with tremendous force. The panicking pooch let out a burst of hot, fiery breath, and the chase was on. The big cheese tried to catch up to the hot dog. With all the relish that he could muster, and if we look closely, what's going on? He's got a fire truck for watering. Helicopter has what, Matthew? Shampoo. And what else, Hadley? Conditioner. Conditioner for the pooch. He's not very happy. And here's a mouse down here that's got a brush to brush him and clean him with. They're at full attack. 
Dogzilla hightailed it out of town and back into the mouth of the ancient volcano. Well, I'll be doggone, squeaked the big cheese. It worked. With the horrifying memory of the bubble bath etched in her mind forever, Dogzilla never again returned to Mausopolis. Within a year, Mausopolis had rebuilt itself just in time for the second annual barbecue cook-off. The mice of Mausopolis fired up their grills, confident that they would never see or hear from Dogzilla again. However, there was one thing they hadn't counted on. Puppies. <laughs> now, now they've got more trouble, don't they? How much more trouble do they have? Four puppies instead of one dogzilla. Isn't that a funny book? I love it. Thank you very much. It's story time every day on the Education Channel. Thanks for joining us, and thanks to Collier County Public Schools, Barnes & Noble Booksellers, and Naples Daily News for making Storytime possible. Storytime is a production of the District Communication and Information Office and the Education Channel, your window to education.